Uh, let's talk uh, very quickly about um, brands that uh, come to mind when you think about digital PCR instrumentation. So um, obviously you have the QX200 from BioRad. So I assume BioRad's top of mind for you. Um, what other companies besides BioRad, if any, do you think of when you think of digital PCR? Uh, I'm wondering, I haven't really looked into um, Thermo Fisher Scientific. Um, let me see. I, I, I think they do have uh, a digital PCR system. Um, yeah, and that's the only other one that I know of. Okay. Um, do you happen to recall the, the name or the, the model number of uh, Thermo system? Uh, let me see. I kind of, let's see. I think it's called the Quant Studio, Quant Studio 3D. Okay. But you, um, but you don't have any personal experience with it, it sounds no. like. No, I haven't used it. Nope. Okay. Um, and then do you know uh, why your labs chose to bring in uh, BioRat UX200s as opposed to, you know, for instance, the, the Quant Studios? Um, you mentioned that you have six of these platforms. So could you talk a bit about why the, the choice was made to um, go with multiple QX200 platforms rather than uh, maybe uh, having a, a broader selection to choose from um sure so i think uh the reason why we had that was because the lab the the pcr lab manager had used um the thermal the the biorad ones before and had a very positive experience with them so it was based on the suggestion that we got more so we got like um a couple of machines, they seem to work well, they were maintained well, we never had any issues with it. And so over time, we decided to order more of the same. Kind of like, you know, it worked traditionally, so we're gonna stick with the same. Okay, got it. Um, so then when it comes to, um, these two companies, BioRad and Thermo, even though you don't have first-hand experience with the uh, Quant Studio 3D, I'm sure that you have an impression of uh, Thermo Fisher just more broadly. Um, so I'd like to do a quick word exercise with you um, where you uh, will just say the, the first, let's say four or five adjectives that come to mind when you think of that particular uh, manufacturer or supplier. So uh, let's start with BioRad and sure. Thermo Fisher afterwards. Okay, so BioRad, reliable, reproducible, reasonable cost, um, uh, really high sensitivities, uh, and very good dynamic range. Okay. And then what about uh, Thermo Fisher? Thermo Fisher, I'm not sure about the sensitivities and the um, dynamic range because I haven't used it. I didn't like need to look at it because like I said, we weren't interested in buying it. Uh, but I think it is about the same. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily need to be about their, their platform. Um, but when you think about Pro Fisher as a manufacturer, as a company, what? Oh, yeah, it's really good. Like they, they're very good. So, like, again, reliable, uh, capable of producing reproducible data. Um, I think cost twice to it, it's, it would be similar to BioRad. And then, um, yeah, I think those three things are the main ones that I would, I would talk about if I had to. Okay. Um, and then a uh, quick question. Do you know how long your BioRad systems have been along, uh, around those, I guess, the six QX200s that you have? Uh, it's been around for 
for a year and a half now. Okay. So why can we mute? Yeah, it sounds like you mentioned earlier that you've been using them for about a year. So, uh, and then in that year and a half, um, are there any um, notable issues that you've encountered with the systems besides the the one that you outlined before with the technician that wasn't properly trained and they had to come in and, and do that that one repair? Um, have there been any other uh, notable call-outs regarding these systems where uh, yeah I, I haven't had any issues with them honestly like as far as um these machines are concerned they're as long as you know how to use them <laughs> and you don't break them i think they're, they're really good and they've required very little maintenance okay and then the next two years, how do you expect your lab's um, expenditure on digital PCR reagents and consumables to change? It'll go up at least by like 10%, if not more. Sorry, you think it's going to increase 10%? Yeah. yeah, increase by 10%, if not more. Okay, why is that? Uh, because we have more users, there's definitely a lot more interest. Uh, to look at single cell analysis using the latest technology, which is the digital PCR system. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, last question, when you are uh, learning about new products that have been launched in the digital PCR space, how would you typically like to find out that, uh, this information about these new technologies? What are your typical portals for, for learning? Um, it's typically through like company emails and um, through websites that talk about, like similar to Science Advisory Board website, where they talk about like latest developments in disease areas or in technology and in platforms. So typically, typically through um, social media as well as through uh, company emails and websites. Okay, so social media, uh, emails, and uh, browsing websites. Okay. Uh, any other portals that you think are valuable resources when it comes to learning about new technologies like this? Um, I think these are the only ones that I can think about. Okay, great. All right, so I think that's all the questions that I have for you today. Uh, Jocelyn, I appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time to chat with me. Um, if you have other uh, thoughts after we hop off of this Zoom call, um, you can definitely feel free to shoot me an email. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Sarah, as well as Kiran. This is great. This is um, this has been a good discussion. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.